Hello, my name is J.B. Sebastian. And I'm your lecturer for today. Welcome to another episode of the RKMCS Criminology Lecture Series. As your lecturer, I'm going to talk about the B. Lee Bid Prison and other penal institutions in the Philippines. It is my hope that after this short lecture, you could be able to understand the need to further reform the correctional system in the Philippines. Let me start with an introduction about the institutional framework on how the correctional system in the Philippines is currently arranged. There are three government agencies involved in the Philippine correctional system. They are as follows, we have the Department of Justice or the DOJ, that supervises and manages our national penitentiaries, administers the parole and probation system, and assists the President in the grant of executive clemency. It has control over the Bureau of Corrections, the Parole and Probation Administration and the Board of Pardons and Parole. Then we have Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG, that has control over the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology and the Provincial Jails. And then we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD, that takes care of the Bureau of Child and Youth Welfare. The DSWD is responsible for handling juvenile offenders or children in conflict with the law. Now, let me talk a bit of history. Prior to the Spanish colonization, the penal system of this country was jurisdictionally local and tribal. It consisted mostly of native customs administered by tribal chieftains, such as the Datus, the Rajas or the Sultans, or village elders. Upon the arrival of the Spanish colonizers in 1521, and at various later dates, when formal occupation of the different villages, the Spanish laws were introduced in the forms of royal decrees, and ordinances promulgated by the King of Spain. Then in 1870, the Código Penal of Spain was put in effect. With the effectivity of the Spanish penal code in the country, it was then necessary to establish a system of incarceration. So, in 1847 the construction of the old Bilibid prison started. By 1865, the Bilibid prison was opened, by virtue of a royal decree of the Spanish crown. The design of the old Bilibid was such that the brigades were constructed in a radial spoke of a wheel form. For command and control purposes, a central tower was placed at the center of spokes. This was the most important tower post, then under the command of the officer of the day. The old Bilibid prison became the central place of confinement of Filipino prisoners. Prior to the establishment of the said prison, Filipino prisoners were confined in jails under the jurisdiction of commandancias that were established in practically every province of the country. The old Bilibid prison became overcrowded, because the prison population increased from year to year. Its original location at the Ascaraga Street, now Recto, was enveloped by modem structural expansion in the city. It was then necessary to move it to a suburban site. Thus, in 1936, the city of Manila exchanged its Muntinlupa property of 552 hectares, with that of the Bureau of Prison Lot in Manila. The Muntinlupa estate was originally intended as a site for boys' training school, but because it is far from Manila, then the city government preferred the site of the old Bilibid. So, New Bilibid Prison became the main national prison in 1941, when it was transferred to its new site in Muntinlupa, a province of Rizal that time. This is the New Bilibid Prison, from an aerial view. It is the maximum security prison facility, which serves prisoners classified as maximum security inmates or PDLs. The New Bilibid Prison also operates two satellite units, namely, Camp Bukong Liweiwei and Camp Sampaguita. These two camps are located just about a few hundred meters back to the new Bilibid prison compound. The Camp Bukong Liweiwei houses minimum security PDLs who works in various projects of the institution. While Camp Sampaguita houses medium security PDLs. At the Camp Sampaguita, it is here where the Reception and Diagnostic Center or the RDC is located, together with the Medium Security Unit, and the Youth Rehabilitation Center or the YRC. The medium security unit can handle prisoners employed in the agricultural projects under guard escorts. On the other hand, the Youth Rehabilitation Center is capable of accommodating inmates of 16 to 21 years of age group. This unit offers a special treatment and training program for youthful tractable offenders. The new Bilibid prison was designed to accommodate 3,000 inmates. But the current number of prisoners housed here, according to the Bureau of Corrections, is nearly 30,000 convicted inmates. Obviously, overcrowding is a major issue at the NBP, ever since its construction back in the 1940s. 
But, aside from the old issue of overcrowding, there are even more pressing problems this institution is currently facing. This includes unmanageable prison gang culture, narcotic drugs in prison, other syndicated criminal activities that continuously corrupts the prison system, and the lack of funds to rectify the system and organization. Hence, the profundity and range of these problems have become a prison crisis for many years. And corruption remains to be the hardcore issue that hit the Bureau of Corrections as evidenced by incidents about GCTA for sale. During these current pandemic times, the doubtful death of high-profile inmates due to COVID-19 infection, hunt the current administration to deal with the public outcry to show proof. Now, let's talk about the other penal institutions in the country. Still, under the management of the Bureau of Corrections are the San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm. In 1869, the authorities saw the need of establishing one prison separate from Bilibid, for those who fought the established government. In 1870, San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm, in the southern tip of Zamboanga, was established for the confinement of political offenders. San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm has an area of 1,524.6 hectares. It houses maximum, medium and minimum custody types of prisoners. Prisoners who are directly committed, by the court to this prison are later sent to the reception and diagnostic center in the central office for study and diagnosis. The principal product of the San Ramon prison is copra, which is one of the biggest sources of income of Bureau of Correction. But it also raises rice, corn, coffee, cattle and livestock. Next, the Iwahig prison and penal farm. This prison facility is located in Palawan. On November 16, 1904, by order of Governor Forbes, who was then Secretary of Commerce and Police, established the Iwahig colony. When the Philippine Commission, by virtue of Reorganization Act 1407, created the Bureau of Prisons on November 1, 1905, the authorities changed the policy regarding Iwahig, so that instead of sending incorrigibles, inmates who were well-behaved and declared tractable were assigned to this colony. Iwahig Penal Colony enjoys the reputation of being one of the best open institutions in the world, as only mutual trust and confidence between the wards and the prison authorities, keep them together, there being no walls. Iwahig Penal Colony is a minimum custody or open institution. It has an area of 36,000 hectares and an average population of 4,000 prisoners. The colony is divided into four sub-colonies, namely, Santa Lucia Sub-Colony, Ina Gawan Sub-Colony, Mon Tibli Sub-Colony and Central Sub-Colony. Each sub-colony operates as a small institution under the management of a penal supervisor. The Iwahig Penal Colony also administers the Tag Umfe Settlement. The settlement is a 1,000-hectare portion of the colony which was subdivided into six hectares homestead lots. These lots are distributed to released inmates who desires to live in the settlement. Next, we have the Correctional Institution for Women or CIW in Mandaluyong City. In 1931, the Correctional Institution for Women was established on an 18-hectare piece of land in Mandaluyong, by authority of Act 3579, which was passed on November 27, 1929. Prior to the establishment of this institution, female prisoners were confined in one of the wings of old Bilibid prisons. Later on, the position for a female superintendent was created in 1934. The Correctional Institution for Women is an institution under the Bureau of Corrections, managed by the female personnel, except the perimeter guard who are males. The CIW was the first penal institution for women in the Philippines until the establishment of its second facility in Davao on 2007. The institution conducts vocational courses in dressmaking, beauty culture, handicrafts cloth weaving and slipper making. The CIW Mindanao is located at the Juan Asenas sub-colony, in Santo Tomas, Davao del Norte, the newest facility controlled by the Bureau of Corrections. It is a landmark facility designed for women inmates coming from the Mindanao region, in response to the government advocacy on gender responsiveness, together with the initiatives of the Women Network Group and other women NGOs in Davao. It was inaugurated on September 18, 2007. The CIWM is a satellite prison facility under the supervision and direction of Davao Prison and Penal Farm Administration. Most of the women inmates incarcerated here are initially composed of those inmates from CIW Mandaluyong City. Next, we have the Davao Prison and Penal Farm. 
established on January 21, 1932, in accordance with Act No. 3732 and Proclamation No. 414, series of 1931. The first contingent of prisoners that opened the colony was led by General Paulino Santos, its founder and the then director of prisons. The area consists of 18,000 hectares, mostly devoted to Abacá. In 1942, the Davao Penal Colony was used as a concentration camp for American prisoners of war. The former inmates were all transferred to the Ina Gawan sub-colony in Iwahig. Davao Penal Colony is a combination of medium and minimum custody type of institution. The greater portion of the prison population houses medium security inmates who live in a stockade enclosed with wires. The prisoners work in the open fields under escort guards. It also manages the biggest abaca plantation in the country. The colony is divided into two sub-colonies, namely, the Panabo sub-colony and the Kapilong sub-colony. Each sub-colony is headed by a penal supervisor. The Davao Penal Colony also raises rice, corn, copra, and cattle. It has a potential of producing rice which will meet the needs of the whole inmate population of the Bureau. The colony is engaged in a joint venture with Tagum Development Company in a 3,000-hectare banana plantation for the export of banana fruits to Japan and the Middle East. The colony also operates the Tangla Settlement where released prisoners of said colony are relocated as homesteaders. Last but not the least of the penal institutions under the Bureau of Corrections is the Leyte Regional Prison. During the martial law years, in response to the growing inmate population, the government established the Leyte Regional Prison in Abayag Leyte, Southern Leyte, by virtue of Presidential Decree No. 28 in 1973. While its plantilla and institutional plan were ideal, lack of funds made the prison unable to realize its full potential, and its facilities are often below par compared with those of other established penal farms. It has an inmate capacity of 500. It follows the same agricultural format, as the main correctional program in addition to some rehabilitation activities. The prison admits convicted offenders from Region 6, and from the National Penitentiary in Muntinlupa. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, a brief presentation about the Bilibid prison and the other penal institutions in the Philippines. I hope you were able to refresh your knowledge about them. Thank you for watching. Kindly like or follow us at Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. Also visit and sign up at our website www.criminologysolutions.com.